Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be not so much a Bible study, but uh, something I promised on how did the wicked get so much power? All right, let's go start with a Bible verse. We're going to go to Luke chapter 16, starting in verse 1. And he, Jesus, and he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward. Now, what's a steward? Uh, that's somebody that you trust with your, your, your goods, your money. So, you know, a lot of people trust the bank with their money. I don't think the bank is a good steward, but what can I tell you? So, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And... He called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no more long uh, for thou mayest be no longer steward. In other words, I heard a rumor you're uh, stealing my stuff or wasting it away or throwing it away. Uh, you know, I want you give to give an account. I want you to prove to me that you're being faithful. Because if you don't, I'm kicking you out. Verse 3. That's the Bob translation. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. Oh yeah, you're going to be fired. So he says, I cannot dig. To beg, I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write down quickly, uh, I'm sorry, and sit down quickly and write fifty. So here it is, the guy owes a hundred, and he says, Well, I'm going to let you off. You, you only got to pay him back fifty. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. That's eighty. So he owes a hundred, but he's only going to have to pay eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward. Oh, yeah. Because he had done wisely. For the children of this world in are, in their generation, wiser than the children of light. You see, the wicked are, basically, this is saying the, the wicked are smarter to do evil than the believers. And that's exactly what happened with this, uh, the banking stuff. Verse 9. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon, or money, friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, that they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Now what's the true riches? The gospel. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. 
Now, I don't want to make this a huge long study, but it probably will end up being that way. The Bible records that Abraham was wealthy with gold and land and cattle. And you can read that in Genesis 13, too. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Now, that's the thing. If you always put God ahead of you, uh, well, if you put your love of God ahead of everything else, oftentimes God will bless you with wealth. I mean, let's face it. Abraham was called the friend of God, and God gave him wealth because he knew money wasn't going to change Abraham. I mean, it says Abraham walked with God. Now, there's a saying. Gold is the currency of kings. Silver is the currency or money of gentlemen. And debt which is what your paper money is. It's a debt. Debt is the currency of slaves. And that's, and that's what uh, your paper money is, people. It's, it's just a, a note of debt. It's an IOU. And they have no intention of paying it. Zero. True wealth is livestock, land, gold, and silver. Because with land and a home, you got a place to live. With animals, you got food, and then gold and silver. Now, let's see. Oh, for those of you that don't know it, if you go to my home page, I have a video I did a number of years ago on 666, the coming collapse, and the mark of the beast. Some people will disagree with my conclusions. That's okay. But it ties in with this study also. And it's worth, I don't know, if you're interested, it's worth listening to. And like I've mentioned, I went to business college for two years, and I took economics. I understand the economic system fairly well. Not that I'm bragging, not that I'm smart, but instead of watching television, I spent time reading books and doing uh, research. Now, um, I'm having, when you look at these pictures, I don't know how to do them in order, to tie up with my speech. So that's why I'm doing the slideshow thing. But let's explain something. A dollar. What is a dollar? Well, the definition of a dollar is 0.77 ounce of pure silver or one ounce of 90% Silver. That's what a dollar is. A dollar is actually a measure of silver. Believe it or not, that's what the definition of a dollar is. Those little pieces of paper that we have in our pocket, those are not dollars. They're just little uh, IOUs, debt, pieces of paper that say dollar, but they're not a dollar. If you look at the uh, U.S. Constitution, it even says that our money would be gold and silver. And believe it or not, up until 1933, uh, we had gold coins that had been legal tender from the birth of this nation. I mean, you're talking the you know 1770s and before, and we had silver coins too. I mean, you know, but uh, then President Rosenfeld, I mean Roosevelt, he uh, passed what was called an executive order during the Depression, 
And he said, oh, gold is illegal for American citizens to own. Turn it in. Well, guess what? When you went to the bank and you wanted to get into your safe deposit box, they would actually have an FBI agent there looking over your shoulder, making sure you didn't have any gold coins in your safe deposit box. So by 1934, all, the great majority of gold coins were taken out of circulation that had been legal tender for, you know, well over 100 years. Well, we still had silver coins. That's one thing, you know, we did. Now, I've got a picture of three paper bills going by um, on the pictures. Let's take a look. All right. There's, um, there's three bills going by, and you might have to actually, you know, stop and take a look at them later. I, I don't know how to, it's too much work for me to try to line up these um, pictures. But the number one, the bill on top with the number one was called a silver certificate. Used to be you could take that to any bank and get a dollar, uh, a, a coin of silver. And then the uh, number five dollar, well, the number, the, the piece of paper with the number five in the middle was called a U.S. Treasury note. And that was backed by gold and silver in Fort Knox, which I've heard is empty. Um, there was a guy named Re House of Representatives Henry Gonzalez of Texas. He was head of the House Banking Committee. And he went to Fort Knox and uh, wanted to take a look at the gold. And uh, they showed him around. He's like, wait a minute. I, I don't see any gold here. All I see is empty warehouse space. He says, I didn't come here to look at the building. He says, I came here to look at the gold. Now, I'm paraphrasing. The head of Fort Knox uh, told him, I don't have to show you anything. And Henry Gonzalez is like, hey, wait a minute. I'm head of the House Banking Committee. I'm your boss. You know what the guy's reply was? He told Henry Gonzalez, head of the House Banking Committee, to go F himself. And I'm not joking. He told him to go F himself. The head of the House Banking Committee, a senator, well, House of Representatives. I mean, he was like flabbergasted. He's like, whoa. So he tried to get a bill to do an audit of the gold in Fort Knox. And uh, every, everybody that had supported him for the last 20-something years of his political career turned against him, including all the newspapers. And, of course, a woman comes out of the woodwork uh, during the next election and said that he, you know, raped her or whatever. And, of course, after the election, after he lost, she came clean and says, well, no, it never happened. But by then he was voted out of office. He's gone. So, all right, so the, the bill on top, silver certificate, you could redeem it in silver, coin, up until... Uh, I think 64 or 65. Now, I remember that. And then the bill, the five, piece of paper with the five, uh, was a U.S. Treasury note, which used to be backed by gold and silver in Fort Knox. Kennedy, President Kennedy, I was alive when he was assassinated. I was pretty young, but I remember. He was uh, printing Treasury notes, which cut out the Federal Reserve which is a private corporation. And when he tried to do that, um, he died shortly thereafter. From what I understand, there were four U.S. presidents that tried to get rid of the uh, central bank in the United States. Kennedy was one of them. Andrew Jackson was another. I think Polk was another, and I don't remember who the uh, I think I'm not sure who the other one is. But there were four of them, and all four of them were killed. And then the piece of paper with a $1 
On the bottom is what's called a fake Federal Reserve note. It's basically an IOU. Now, um, I got a book on the Federal, the Federal Reserve. I've got, you've been probably looking at it. Uh, I scanned it. The Federal Reserve, if you look at the papers, is basically a private bank. And they get interest on the money that they print. Ever wonder why the national debt never gets paid? Well, they get interest on the national debt. They let us borrow our own money with interest. I mean, it used to be gold and silver coins was what we had. But they took it all out of circulation. Oh, they took silver coins out of circulation in 64 and replaced it with pieces of paper and, you know, silver colored coins. Uh, I, I don't even think they're, they don't even have any silver in them, I don't think. But um, the Federal Reserve Bank is a private bank chartered by the government. And they get a percentage of interest on the national debt. So the more the national debt is, the more interest that they earn. They let us borrow our own money with interest. Isn't that wonderful? Now, all companies or corporations have charters from the government. Sometimes a federal, sometimes a state. Oh, your churches also have charters from the government. They exist at the will of the government. You know, Jesus did not get permission from Rome to preach but our preachers do. They have to get permission from uh, the state that they live in. So what can I tell you? But the, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank is a private bank. And when they want to, uh, they're owned by the member banks. Now that's a the thing. They issued stock and because it's a private corporation, um, trying to find out who owns the stock is almost impossible. And besides, people that have looked into it, they end up dead. But if you want to read a book on it, uh, Eustace Mullins wrote a book on that. Um, and let's see, there's a couple of people. Oh, there's another. Uh, it's called The Creature from Jekyll, J-A-K-Y-L-L, -L, Island. The creature from Jekyll Island, uh, the author is G. Edward Griffin. And, um, but, you know, I don't know if uh, Griffin is a Christian or not, but Eustace Mullins was indeed a Christian. So, it explains if you're interested in how it came about. But what basically happens is the member banks own the Federal Reserve Bank and they earn interest on the money for the national debt. Like I said, uh, but I bet you that Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Citi, those are probably the, the people that own the Federal Reserve. And now, people will tell you, oh no, the Federal Reserve Bank is part of the U.S. government. Well, Federal Express isn't part of the federal government. They have the same, you know, a name in it. But I tell you what, go to a U.S. government organizational chart and find out where the Federal Reserve fits in. Is it under the executive branch, under the presidency? No. Is it under the legislative branch with Congress? Uh, no. Is it under the judicial branch with the Supreme Court? No. Is it tied in with the Treasury Department? No. You can't find it because it's not part of the, it's not on the organizational chart. 
Now, the thing is, call them up and ask them uh, about their jobs at the Federal Reserve Bank. And they'll tell you, this is not a civil service position. You see, if it was part of the U.S. government, it would be a civil service position. Now, the thing is, if, uh, let's say, what has happened in the past was these wicked people went to the king of a country, you know, they started in Europe, and told the king, hey, why don't we, uh, you know, take all the gold and silver and give the people paper for money? And what they did was, is like we mentioned the silver certificate, they get you to think, well, you know, carrying a bunch of gold coins around and, uh, or silver coins is heavy. Ooh, hey, we got paper money. And all I got to do is take it to the bank and exchange it, you know. So they do that for a while. And then one day after you've gotten used to carrying paper around, they say, oh, well, you can't, you can't trade it in anymore. And as long as people believe the lie and accept the paper money, uh, the economy holds up. Now, in Germany, after World War I, uh, the German government just started printing paper money. And it became so useless. And I'm not joking. It became so useless that people would get paid three times in a day so they could take their wheelbarrows of money to go buy a loaf of bread. A wheelbarrow of money, paper. People used to use the, that as wallpaper. People used to take the bills and use it as toilet paper because uh, toilet paper costs more than the, the, the paper money. I mean, they were just printing money constantly. I mean, one day your, you know, uh, loaf of bread was 100, and then the next day it was 1,000, and then the next day it was 10,000, and then it was 100,000. And, you know, it was insane. And this was what led up to Hitler coming to power. And believe me, a, a number of Germans knew who was in charge of the banking system. Now, there's a, a guy named Rothschild. Uh, he was a member of the British Parliament, and he made a statement and said, give me control of a nation's money, and I don't care who passes the laws. In other words, I'm going to be in control. You give me the nation's money, and I'll have control. But what happened was... Uh, the U.S. Congress had gone home for um, winter vacation. Some people call it Christmas. And there was only a few members left. And they got together and said, oh, hey, let's vote on the uh, Federal Reserve Bill, Federal Reserve Act Bill. And they voted it in. And, of course, Woodrow Wilson, uh, who was president at the time, he accepted it. So they gained control of the U.S. money and there was some opposition and they wanted to repeal it, but they couldn't. They just didn't have the votes. You see, people, they will, anybody that opposes them ends up dead. I mean, that's what usually ends up happening. Andrew Jackson, president, he got rid of the central bank and uh, it ended up costing him his life. I think he was probably the greatest president in this our history. Uh, Kennedy, like I mentioned, he tried to get rid of the central bank and the uh, C, I, and the letter A. He tried to get rid of them too. And uh, a couple weeks later, he was dead. He said he wanted to break the organization up into a thousand pieces and and scatter it to the wind. He died. Yeah, and I remember that. Because I was pretty young then. But um, 
so yeah, I've got uh, some pictures of uh, you know gold coins and silver coins, and I remember when I was uh, in elementary school, real young, like first or second grade, uh, we had silver coins, and I remember a silver dime would buy two large candy bars. What's a candy bar cost now? Like a dollar something or other? Now, they'll tell you that inflation is the price of goods going up in cost. That is a lie. Inflation is the value of your money going down because they dilute it with just printing money. Now, the problem is, let's say... ABC printed a story or told a, the network ABC, or if you're in England, uh, uh, BBC, or if you're in Germany, uh, Das Spiegel, a magazine or whatever. They ran a story about um, the, the wicked people that are in charge of all this stuff. Well, it's simple. The central bank, like our Federal Reserve, or Bank of England, or the Bank of Germany, what they would do is they call the Treasury Department and say, hey, we want to buy um, ABC or Das Spiegel or BBC. Print up a billion dollars. And if you don't know what a billion dollars is, that's a thousand millions. So what they do they just print up a billion dollars and they go to the and buy up all the stock. And uh, if you're a large stockholder and they say, hey, you're going to sell us your stock or we'll kill you. You know, like the mafia, you know, they make you an offer you can't refuse. Um, there was a newspaper that was printing stories that uh, they didn't like. And guess what? they bought up the paper company that was supplying his paper for his newspapers. And then they told him, no, we don't, we're not going to sell you any news, uh, newsprint paper. And, um, and then another guy that was selling them, was willing to sell them paper. He says, screw you, I'm going to sell this company paper. Well, his, uh, his dog ended up being horribly killed and thrown on his porch. And they offered to buy him out. And, um, you know, if, I guess that's his message saying, oh, next time it's not going to be your dog, it'll be your daughter. So, you know, that's how they do it. Well, they printed a billion dollars and they bought ABC. Printed another billion, bought NBC. Printed another billion, bought uh, CNN and ABC and you know they bought up all the media and they bought up all the big companies I mean come on you think Amazon just you know they were they just came into being no people they bought up all the food companies um, let's see there's Archer Daniel Midland I'm trying to think of the other big food company I mean, you got ConAgra, you've got uh, Monsanto. I mean, they have bought up all the food companies, and they bought up all the media. So guess what? That's how they've done it. Now, the thing is, once you gain control of one country's money, then you go to another country and you do the same thing. And, you know, they did this in Germany. They did it in England. Uh, United States had their, uh, our country's money taken over. I think it was 1913. And it's one of, believe it or not, a central bank, the idea of a central blank bank is one of the planks of the Communist Manifesto. Do you know the United States adopted a central bank, Communist Manifesto, before Russia did, 
Russia's revolution in 1917. Essentially, we became partially communist before Russia did. So, but um, that's why the national debt will never be paid. And I asked my economics teacher, he, I asked him, well, who owns the debt? I remember this. And he says, oh, well, we, we, we owe the debt to ourselves. I'm like, what? What do you mean we owe the debt to ourselves? He goes, yeah, the United States government um, owes the debt to themselves. I mean, what kind of stupid crap is that? I'm going to take $20 out of my one pocket and put it in the other pocket and then say, oh, you owe this pocket $20. And, and I found out when we were just printing money, of course, they denied that the Federal Reserve was a private bank. I, I, I was like, wait a minute, we just print money? Why don't we just print a million dollars and give it to everybody, and then everybody's a millionaire? And he says, oh, well, you know, it's not that simple. I, I had a dumbfounded look on my face. I didn't understand all this stuff back then. You know, and then I get interested, and I start looking it up. But the thing is, they have a thing called hyperinflation. And I mentioned it about Germany um, wheelbarrows of money. That's They just print money until it, you know, worthless money, paper money. See, you can't do that with gold and silver coins. So basically, uh, you know, what happens after you have hyperinflation is things collapse. Because people get to the point they don't want worthless pieces of paper. You know, when you can use printed paper money for toilet paper because it's cheaper to use than toilet paper, something's wrong. Now what the banks will do is they will, uh, when you pay your bills, and that's why the Bible says to uh, owe no man nothing but love, because if you've got bills that you've got to pay and you, you have a limited supply of money and you pay your bills, well the banks get to the point where they don't lend any more money out. And then guess what? When people run out of money because they've paid all these bills, uh, that's a depression. Then you don't have, you know, you can't even buy shoes. I mean, really, or food for that matter. And that's how a depression happens. That, and they, they did this in uh, many countries worldwide, and they did it to us in the 30s. You know, that's... That's why they got rid of the gold and silver coins. Our money is worthless. Do you know that a, you could have a, a one-ounce coin of gold? I think it was 90% pure. One-ounce gold coin was $20 back in the 1920s. What's an ounce of gold cost now? Like $1,500? It isn't that the price of gold went up, it's the value of the money went down. Now, eventually, I'm sure that they're going to collapse the economies and they'll probably usher us into the mark of the beast, whatever form it's in. Uh, you know, what I find interesting is that your uh, the real ID, your driver's licenses now with the states that the Federal Reserve... Uh, the federal government mandated, they have a chip in them, a microchip. Your credit cards from the bank or your ATM or card, um, your debit card has a chip in it. And, you know, when you get Social Security or welfare or you work for an employer, almost all of them require you to have direct deposit. I mean... I remember when I was in the Army, they would pay us in cash. We'd walk in to the officer in charge and salute him and uh, give him our name, rank, and serial number and sign a piece of paper that we got paid and get the cash. I mean, those days are gone. Oh, you got to have direct deposit. you got to go to the bank and, you know, direct deposit. Now, what would happen if the the government and the banks got together and said, look, we got one chip for the financial and one chip for identification. That's stupid. Why don't we merge them and make them one? And why are, you know, people can lose their cards. 
so let's put it on the right hand or in the forehead. Now, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but I tell you what, after having taken computer science and studying electronics, yeah, I know, I, I was, you know, I, I studied for so many careers, and, you know, Lord, let it slam in my face. Uh, South Florida used to have quite a large number of electronics companies. Well, they all moved overseas about the time I was in school. And uh, the computers, basically the same thing. I mean, Microsoft won't even hire an American. Uh, they get people from India. Yeah, they go to India. They won't even hire an American citizen to, to work programming. They hire in people from India. You know. So, um, I guess the uh, Lord didn't want me to have a career. I think right now I'm doing what pretty much close to what he would like me to do, but I digress. But, um, you know, let's face it. Uh, if they had a chip that they could put in the right hand or in the forehead and use it for identification and use it for um, financial, let's face it, you couldn't buy or sell without it. And, you know, it, it's possible. I think it's very possible. So, all right, well, people, um, I guess I've covered just about everything. Oh, by the way, the, um, you know that mosque thing that happened in New Z? Z is in zombie land and uh, down under in Australia. If you share the video of that thing that supposedly, you know, the, the shooting thing that supposedly happened, man, I tell you what, when you look at that video, it looks fake. I mean, everything looks fake. But if you share that video in those two places, they're arresting people and charging them with 10-year uh, potential prison sentences. And that should tell you something. And YouTube and Facebook are deleting them. Matter of fact, uh, Bright Eon is also was told, you will either delete these videos or we will block access to the Internet so that people can't go to your web, uh, your video site. So Mike Adams, he... Um, you know, he doesn't want his million-dollar baby going up in smoke, so he, uh, he's, delist, he, he delete, he's deleting them all. Matter of fact, the last um, video that I did, I mentioned that. I put those keywords in, the New Zealand, new, Z as in zombie, land, about the uh, video and the, um, the shooting thing. You know, YouTube took forever to process the video. I think somebody, um, I went back and deleted those words, and then it processed real quick. Honestly, I think they're, uh, I think they're looking at the videos, and or you know, looking at the keywords and holding them. So, I, you know, it's censorship, people. It's there. But that's how they, they did it. You know, they, they told the government, print up billions of dollars, and they bought up all the businesses. And they collect interest on the debt. So the more money they bar we borrow, the more money they make in interest. Now, according to this book, uh, I think this book was written in the early, early 60s, they were getting 6% interest. Can you imagine getting 6% interest on uh, 25, 30 trillion dollars in debt? Uh, that's, that's a lot of money, people. That's a lot of money. So, all right, well, um, that's how the wicked have done it. And people, let me tell you something. 
you know, all these idiots telling people, oh, buy gold. Well, the United States government made gold illegal back in the day. They can do it again. They can make silver illegal. Matter of fact, um, new zombie land, Z, you know, Z, they, uh, they just passed a law that um, those military-style weapons are now illegal. Turn them in. Yeah. They don't want us to uh, know what's going on or be able to, you know, fight back. So, um, yeah. All right, so all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, and that's Jesus, who is Christ, in his precious name, amen.